Hey Parkwood fam and whoever else might be watching, my name is Sean and uh, I'm glad to be able to share with you for this edition of our Midweek Encouragement Devotion. So for those of you that are alive right now, which I'm assuming is anybody that's watching this video right now, it's not groundbreaking news to share that there's a lot happening uh, right now in our lives, in, in your life, in my life, the world going, uh, going on around us, um, things that draw our attention, things that we fixate our, our, our mind and our eyes and our hearts on. And uh, so whether that's COVID or, or vaccines, political unrest, work, school, family issues, uh, money, social media, health, comments the size of Texas that are hurtling towards the earth for an extinction level event. That That's something I watched on Netflix the other night. But there's no shortage of other things in our lives that we just get fixated on. Why? Quite simply because there are things that are happening right in front of us in everyday real life. They're, they're, the, the, the normal routines of life that are, that are happening uh, every day that we have to experience. And so it's interesting that scripture talks about this directly about getting caught up uh, in the things that uh, that are happening around us, the daily things that we can fixate on. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, Paul kind of unpacks this for his audience in Corinth. And he says, you know what? Even though you guys uh, are getting caught up in uh, the everyday worries and you're stressing out about life and that, there's a bigger picture at play here. And so here's what he says to them. Here's kind of how he lays that out in uh, verse 16 of, uh, of 2 Corinthians 4. Um, he says, therefore, we do not lose heart, which he's talking in the verses previous to that, that, um, hey, I, I, I know there's, there's real-time things that are going on in life right now. We're under Roman occupation, uh, the persecution of being a follower of Christ. These, these are all real things. But he says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And here's the key verse here that we're fixing our eyes on. Uh, verse 18, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So the temporary things that happen in life, like things like work and health, I mean, those, those are temporary. School and finances, temporary um success the, pr the pursuit of success and, and happiness and pleasure the, those are temporary things just like covid and social unrest drama and and worries of life those are temporary things and these temporary things can allow us to easily fixate all of our, our attention and energy uh, on those things if we let them and so paul wants to flip the script and he tells us not to fixate on those things that we can easily see right in front of us but actually we're supposed to fix our eyes on the things that we can't see so why would Paul say something that seems kind of counter counterintuitive? Um, hey, guys, don't fix your eyes. Don't focus on the things that are actually going around in, uh, in your life right now. Fix your eyes and your attention on the things that you can't see. Well, why would Paul say something like that? He's saying because those things that are going on in life, well, they matter in, in the life that we're living right now, but he says they're temporary. They won't last. They're not part of the end game. Instead, he calls us to fix our eyes on the things that are eternal, the things that we can't always see. And so what are those things? Well, heaven's eternal. Uh, God's love, joy, and peace that will last forever. Uh, his promises, those are eternal. Life forever with Jesus without sickness, without sadness, without drama, without death for eternity is something worth look for, looking forward to. It's worth fixing our eyes on. That's the real end game. And so you might be thinking, okay, thanks for the encouragement, Captain Idealist, but how exactly do I not fix my heart and my attention on the actual life that's going on around me, the daily stresses uh, of life? And so uh, we talk about so much in life that uh, finding balance in a healthy life. So not too much of this, not too much of that, but finding the balance. And so uh, we can apply that as a spiritual principle that uh, learning to replace the stressful, like the worries of life and the distracting thoughts that are concerning the temporary, um, and, and replacing those with the promises of Jesus for renewal and for joy that God has in store for us both here and now and in the future. In fact, uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, he encourages us, says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So replacing the, the temporary worries of this world and stresses of life and replacing that with the promises of God's truth, the, the eternal things, the things that aren't always uh, as easy to see around us. And is it easy? No, it's, it's not, I agree, but it's possible. And I'm a firm believer that if God calls us to do something, then it's doable. Uh, and so when the load gets too heavy for us to, to be able to carry due to, to, to worries, both the physical, physical concerns of um, the, the physical realm, the, the things that are seen, we can lighten the load by dwelling on the spiritual things, the things that are unseen, uh, the things that we're trusting God with. And so why don't you just take a moment, or at least maybe after you're done watching this video, just to ask the Lord, and I, and I need to ask him myself, I get caught up in a whole lot of things that I don't need to be caught up in in life. But why don't we ask Holy Spirit to allow us to 
to see through, to, for him to enable us to see through the eyes of faith beyond our present circumstances. The author of Hebrews uh, chapter 11 says that faith is the confidence that what we hope for is actually going to happen and gives us assurance about things we can't see. So let me leave you with this nugget here, um, is that so often in life, if we allow it, we, we can get all caught up with, with money and school, hopefully you can see this, uh, job, health, all, all those things in life. And God's still here in the midst of it. But when we focus our attention on all these things here, God's still here. It's just harder to focus on him. It's harder to see him in the midst of that. But when we fix our eyes on God, when we fix our eyes on Jesus and his promises and surrender our hearts and our worries to, and our lives to him, it doesn't mean that our, our problems just magically disappear. It just brings us the confidence and knowledge to know that God's in front of all this, that, that he's got this under control, not just, not just in the future, but in the here and now. So let me encourage you. I need to encourage myself. The Lord is encouraging me. Let us fix our eyes, not on the temporary, the things that are unseen, the unrest that's going on around us, but let us fix our eyes on the one who is able and can be trusted in all things, the seen and the unseen. Hope that's been an encouragement for you today. Uh, God bless you guys. We'll look forward to seeing you soon.